Hi, everyone. It's Joe Venary, the host of Fit Insider, the show where I talk with the entrepreneurs, executives, and investors who are redefining the business of fitness and wellness. Today, I'm joined by Marco Crespo. Marco is the global chief commercial officer at Gym Pass. In today's episode, we talked about Gym Pass's three sided marketplace, why the company won't pursue a direct to consumer model, and how they're innovating in response to COVID 19. Let's get into it. Hi, Marco. Welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Joe. It was a pleasure being here. And yeah, we're excited to chat. I know you're calling in from Brazil today, so I appreciate you making the time. And to kick things off, can you just give us the the high level view, the context? What are you working on at Gym Pass? Kind of what the state of the the company is today? Of course. So so like so, Gym Pass for for those that doesn't know like what, what Gym Pass is, but we're a corporate you know well being platform where we engage with corporations to make sure they're investing in the physical and, and mental well-being of their employees. And then in the other end, what we do, we connect those employees with, you know, fitness providers uh, uh, of many rooms. So we are, you know, present now in 14 markets, uh, Latin America, Europe, and the United States. And myself personally, I joined Gym Pass, you know, like, uh, like four years ago, I would say. So I started leading the Brazilian operation. Then I expanded to the like Latin America. So expanding our operation to Mexico, Argentina, Chile, uh, in, in addition to Brazil. And then more recently, six to seven months ago, I joined the U.S. operation to lead the U.S. market. And, and more recently, I just moved to a global commercial role overseeing, you know, all the 14 markets where we operate, both, you know, like Europe, U.S., and also uh, Latin America. Right. That's fantastic. And I know you guys have been growing and fer- focused on kind of expanding the presence, as you mentioned, globally. Um, can you just kind of talk about what that expansion has looked like for you personally as well for Gym Pass and, and really how you've taken that uh, really employer-funded model and, and grown it? Yes, sure. So, so uh, f- first of all, I think you know, the mission of Gym Pass, which is important to highlight, is to defeat an activity. So, so this means that we have you know, an obligation to communicate and to talk to people that are not active at all and how we can convince them to have an active lifestyle in a way. So, so in one end, it's how to go in each one of the markets, understanding each one or, or, or like each culture and see how they connect with fitness in general. But at the same time, how can we convince people to join the effort, both in when you think about corporations and how to convince corporations to invest in well-being. And of course, you can imagine this is different when you think about corporations in the US versus corporations in Mexico and in Europe and so forth. So like each market has some level of maturity in terms of thinking about uh, wellness. But at the same time, once you're able to convince them to invest in these initiatives, you have also to talk to the employees of those clients uh, just to make sure that they are you know, coming to uh, this active lifestyle. So, so I think although there's some differentiation in each of the markets, we see like a huge opportunity uh, for us to explore. And then from, uh, I would say, a fitness partner or, or our fitness partner's perspective, it's interesting because we're talking about, you know, sometimes 95% or 85% of the population of uh, like a specific market that is not accessing fitness in general. So, so we're focusing on how to convince those people to access, you know, those facilities. And then in this sense, it's all new users that we can bring our, uh, to our to our fitness partners. That's that's in a in a nutshell. I think like the way we're pushing and 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 I think in terms of the expansion strategy, the way we looked at this in the past was first, you know, we moved from Brazil to Latin America, which was a natural expansion. So Mexico came first, and then Argentina and Chile. After that, there was uh, Europe. So we started from Spain, and from Spain we expanded to almost all countries in uh, in in Western Europe now, uh, operating UK. Netherlands, uh, Germany, France, uh, Italy, Spain, and Portugal. So in Ireland, so almost all the markets there already with you know some some presence of gym pass. And more recently, not more recently, like two years ago, we decided to uh, also uh, operate in the United States. And 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 the expansion has been really interesting. So since we started two years ago, we already got uh, more than twelve, I think, some, almost twelve thousand fitness partners, you know, like connected, like, you know, in our platform through, like through our platform to the, you know, uh, eligible members or employees of our clients. So it's been pretty, an interesting journey so far. Absolutely. And a quick one at that, uh, especially with the rollout in the United States already getting to that 12,000 mark. And, and just thinking about 
how you're incentivizing the various parties involved. You know, obviously you're going to the employers and saying we can improve uh, employee well-being, we can improve productivity, we can affect uh, health healthcare costs with the employees. You're telling them they have more access to different types of fitness activities. Um, and again, I think really smart targeting folks who are not active um, and getting them active. Of course, for the the fitness partners, they want to see more people coming through the door. Um, they want to see new people coming through the door. How are you able to satisfy kind of the three sides of that, call it a marketplace, but three customers for you at the same time? Yeah, that's that's an interesting challenge, I would say. And 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 but that's also like part of the differentiation of, of Gym Pass, the uniqueness, I would say, of our of our business model, right? And 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 I think and think you need to understand what, what really matters for each one of the of, of the parties so that you can really add value to 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 all of them and create a balanced ecosystem when you think about you know like making the, the decisions for each party. So so when you think about the fitness providers, I think one is making sure that you're bringing new people in. So this is really critical. And when we're targeting the inactive people or the inactive population, this is pretty straightforward, right? So, so we have a lot of great examples where our fitness partners, they are tracking the, like, who's coming into, like, through Gym Pass. So like, are there new users? Are there, you know, users that canceled in the past and now they're back with Gym Pass? Are they users that were already with the gym and just, like, switch it because the company now is sponsoring the program? So those are the, you know, the, the, the different types of metrics that they're looking at. And most of them, you know, when you look at the data, we're talking about, you know, 85, 90% of people that are really new to that, you know, fitness partner. So, so this is really interesting. So it really adds value to them. And, 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 and another aspect is that, you know, when you think about pricing and there was a lot of discussion about like how to do pricing, you know, and, and, and how to, you know, reduce pricing, et cetera. We really respect, you know, our partners in this matter. And of course, their elasticity when you think about pricing, but it's their choice, you know, how to position themselves within our platform. And then if they want to preserve more margin, but less volume, we can work. If they're pushing for more volume and then maybe, you know, like uh, accepting maybe, you know, a, lo- a lower, let's say, a, 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 a average ticket for that, you know, person, they can do as well. So it's more like we offer the flexibility, but the decision is always, you know, with our partner. So with this, you're able to, in a way, protect them and make sure that you're focusing on not, you know, cannibalizing their business, but actually you know, bring your really new people in. Uh, when you think about the the the, the employee, the, the employer, sorry, it's 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 a different, you know, game, right? What they really are looking for, they all understand that fitness is good, right? Physical activity. Like, I cannot say nobody will say, hey, I don't believe that, you know, being having an active lifestyle. It's it's bad for my employees. It doesn't it doesn't happen that way, right? So we understand the benefit in terms of you know lower health costs, lower absentees, lower turnover, you know more engagement. They all believe in that. I think what we're looking at is how can we have like a one single solution that work for you know that works for all their employees, and that's where HR struggles most of the time because one they cannot make partnership with you know thousands of locations in one end. They cannot build or pay, you know, those thousand players, it's really hard for them to control the billing process. And and and, and third, they don't have any data about it. So, so what GymPass comes into play and provide them is like one is one-stop shop. So they just say, what are the gyms or the, 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 the student that they would like to have as part of the network? We go there with our team and we bring those players in. The second is like, it's one-stop shop. So we charge the company, the company will deduct for the employees in terms of payroll. And then we go and distribute the payments according to the usage to all our fitness parts. And third, we provide a lot of data to our, our, our HR partners. So they have information about how many people are enrolled, how many people are using, how many people are visiting, how many visits a month. So versus like for, by department. So there's a lot of intel that we can provide, which allows, you know, the, 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 our partner, our, our HR clients in order to one, prove that what they're doing makes sense. So like they can do an ROI analysis or many different ROI analysis for that investment. Second, they can create competition within the company. So departments that are more engaged, less engaged, more active, less active, this is really important. And also we can provide a solution that works for the headquarter that usually had a good solution because they're like in city centers, they are you know, with maybe like some like uh, facility, like gyms or, or on-site facilities, I would say. But then you think about people in the field you know, Gym Pass comes into like really handy for them because then we can provide the same level of sophistication or solution for people in the headquarter, but also for people, you know, in, in the front line, uh, people in the retail sector. So 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 that's this is really powerful from an HR perspective. And then once you have both, uh, and of course, then 
you know, on the user side, what they really want is, you know, their companies to sponsor that benefit. So they want to have something that is better because their company is sponsored. This is first. And second, they want to have the ability or the flexibility to, you know, use multiple locations. So when you think about, does that mean that they're going to be using different locations every day, every month? No, it does not because they're loyal to, you know, they're like one or two like specific fitness partners, but it provides them the ability if they're traveling that they can keep, you know, their active routine or, or their daily routine uh, like with gym pass. So this gives men, them the ability to, you know, try different things and find an activity that they will love. Because at the end of the day, that's what we believe. So we believe that everyone could be active if they find something that they really, you know, connect with or, you know, that, that they're passionate about. So that's what we're trying to help on the user side. So if you're able to kind of, you know, provide value to these three, you know, like the parties, I think, you know, as we're, we have been able to do, uh, it's, 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 a, it's an impressive, powerful market. And then, you know, like the magic happens. Yeah, certainly. There's a, a lot of moving parts there. And one of the things that you mentioned, I guess, in a couple of different ways, talking about a sustainable model, not only for the employers, for the user, but also for the fitness partners. And one of the things that we've seen in the industry is a concern about um, kind of devaluing the the fitness class itself or kind of have a race to the bottom in terms of pricing and discounts or putting the the onus of pay, paying the price on the end user themselves would you say and I, I mean obviously you would say but how do you characterize it in terms of gym pass being a, a better value proposition so I, th- I think that's 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 an interesting uh, point and and that's the main reason why we decided not to operate, you know, in, in the B2C market in the United States, for instance. So we understand that, you know, our fitness partners, they can do an amazing job in trying to convince people directly to join their studios, to join their classes, to, you know, you know, uh, uh, kind of like, you know, become their members, right? I think our, our value to them goes into convincing HRs to sponsor those programs and then leverage that communication to reach out to people that are not looking into fitness. So I think if, if someone is looking into fitness, they probably will be better off, you know, connecting directly with our fit, like with our partners versus going through, let's say like through gym pass, right? So that's why we are not in this environment where we're just like, what do we call the, the two-sided marketplace, right? With, you know, a lot of players are, because it's really hard to add value to the user when you think about, you know, a two-sided marketplace, because in order for you to be more relevant or to attract more users, you have to give discount. And in order for you to give discount, there is no other option versus either burn cash or, you know, for you to like uh, uh, pressure your partners to reduce their prices. So that's that's where the like the, the scenario happens where in order for you to grow, you, you, you have to like to, to have this imbalance in, in your equation. When you think about the three-sided marketplace, it's different because the value that you're adding, it's a different type of value to HR. So like one, you can funnel wellness money to the sector, to the fitness sector, and you know, in, in, in a way, uh, create a, 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 a pricing structure where you can still create a differentiation for the user, um, sponsored by, by their, like the, the, the corporations, at the same time where you can pay something that is still fair to you know, like all our fitness parts. So, so I think you know, when you believe on this uniqueness of the model, that's what I think you can you know, create an advantage for the user in one end, the employees of our clients, at the same time that you you know, have a fair price for your partners. And, and, and the only way you can do this is if you're able to funnel, in a way, corporate money to this, you know, equation. So that's what we believe. That's why we believe, you know, our, our model is so unique in a way that you can have both. So that's why, like, when we made a constant decision not to go indirectly, you know, into the B2C arena and keeping focusing on the B2B. Of course, growth is slower when you think about only B2B. Or when you think about only corporate, because you have to convince corporations to join and, and convincing corporations has a long sales cycle, as you can imagine, right? All those budgeting cycles and you have procurement, all this is really challenging. But if but we believe that's the right way to add value to the sector, right? Versus going directly, you know, after the consumer that is just looking for a fitness class at this point in time. With that being said, given that you're you're kind of building up the core business of going to the employer, but also getting all of these different fitness providers onto the platform. Is there down the road a, a chance that you go direct to consumer and have kind of like an ancillary product that does that? We, we don't think so. Uh, we believe the opportunity to target, you know, people that are inactive through corporations 
it's 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 big enough, you know, that will keep us busy for for many many years. So so we believe that we can be loyal to our our value proposition and focusing 100% on the you know corporate wellness sector. So we don't we don't see that coming. Great, yeah. And and just one more thing, kind of digging into the the kind of value that you're adding when you think about the corporations, um, when folks are participating. Kind of the the dirty secret of the fitness industry, right, is this idea of breakage that people have memberships that they don't use. Maybe they're paying for it and they they don't cancel it. Um, how is it that you are able to ensure that people are going, continue to go, and make sure that you know that corporate partner is maintaining the value over the long run? Sure, I think th- the, the the way we create our model is that you know in a way, of course, it there's like the HR part of it, and and we're we're able to convince them to to sponsor those programs. Also, the fitness uh, uh, partner. So, so at the end of the day, the way we structure that we're making money, you know, if you know people are using you know gym pass and if people are using the gyms, right? So in this way, everyone in the chain is incentivized by usage. I would say so. Gyms will be incentivized by usage. I'm incentivized by usage because then I'm more relevant to HR. And HR is incentivized by usage because the more people are using, the more they collect the benefits. So they're not collecting the benefits. So think about this. You know, because people are a member, right? Or because people are paying a membership. It's not it's not where the benefit comes from when you think about like from an HR perspective. The benefit really comes from when people are actually using the benefit and being active. So what HR wants people for to be more active. What James wants people to be for being to, like to be more active. And what we want is the same. I think what's changing in the industry, in my point of view, Joe, which is important, is that you know, I think I think it's 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 moving from a moment where you know breakage was good, let's say, uh, to, to a scenario where usage is the key, right? And and what what do we really want is for people to be in your gym or your in your studio, consuming your class or consuming what you're offering, and also consuming other auxiliary revenue. So think about you know someone that is paying you a membership but never coming to your location versus someone that co- like pays a membership comes to your location every day and eat in your location and use you know all the service and have a personal training. So, and buy merchandise. So, so I think at the end of the day, what you really want is kind of like the letter and that you want people to really be, 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 be active using and promoting because those are the people that will bring new users in. So I think at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're probably seeing a shift where uh, uh, the, the fitness act will move towards more like the hospitality business where what you really want is for people to be, you know, more and more present in your, in your facility. So that's, that's, that's how I think we, we're able to align the incentives and that's where we think that, that the pro like the sector is also going. Right. And kind of shifting gears just a little bit here. Um, one thing that I, I did want to touch on, we're recording this kind of amid the coronavirus outbreak, obviously um, that's affecting not only um, business and the fitness industry, but kind of the world as we know it. Um, but specifically kind of to this audience and, and, and what's going on at gym pass, how is this, uh, impacted the business and, and how are you guys, what steps are you taking to kind of mitigate uh, any of the, the kind of damage? Yeah, I think first of all, it's like no one would be able to predict what, you know, this lockdown would mean, right, for, for the whole sector. And I think, you know, when I talk to my partners, everyone is suffering, trying to reinvent themselves and, and trying to figure out how to, you know, like almost survive in this new environment, right? So the way we approach this, Joe, was understanding that we had to quickly provide a solution for people that were working from home and that you know were not able to access those locations. And, and the approach that we decided to take is how can we think about a solution or a product or a service that in one end provides that type of service for our, you know, the employees of our clients and for our clients, but at the same time, that could engage and, and, and leverage the network of partners that we have. So 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 I think you know what we what we came with is in, in, in we announced like a, a, like a while ago, and now we're deploying that in terms of like the technology and, and solution is to convince our partners that they could also make money by providing live classes, which would be kind of like the closest experience to an in-person you know class that they were offering before. So we believe that people would be willing to pay for that you know service, and we started to convince them and to help them in a way to provide that type of, of service. So, so like explaining to them how they could do live classes, how live classes is different than on demand, how, you know, let's, you know, charge for this versus offering this for free on social media. So there's a lot of things that we had to, 
to do or, or to, to discuss and to organize together with our partners so that we were able to provide this from a technology perspective, but also from a business perspective. Now what we see is that our partners, they are prepared and, and that's where we're going to be communicating to our users on Monday. It's, it's to, to the employees of our, of our clients on Monday is that now they will be able to have access to live classes with GymPass. So we created a separate entity with GymPass. So now uh, it's, it's, it's a different, uh, and I can explain more why we decided to do this and it, takes, it take, took a little bit more time. But now, you know, fitness partners will be able to provide both in-person and also live classes. So the idea is to provide, you know, they can do one-to-one. In terms of live class, they can do one-to-many and they have the flexibility to that. Uh, with with no restriction because now the beauty of the live classes to be totally honest with you is that someone you know in new york let's say now can 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 give a class uh, for someone let's say in 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 pennsylvania where you are or, or or let's say in chicago because now there's no geographical barrier so so we believe that people will be able to access many more classes and people could be even more active when you think about you know having those live classes at their home so we are seeing Solutions that are that are connecting with their kids, so people are like doing exercise with their kids. So there's like a lot of new things uh, happening, which is really interesting. And and to be honest, what we believe, you know, like with this all uh, COVID situation, that once we're back to the game, uh, you know, the game is not going to be the same, right? And and there will be some limitations, probably in terms of, you know, maybe bikes in cycling studios were not going to be able to be as close as they were before, or mats in a in a in a yoga studio they cannot be as close as anymore so we don't know exactly how this going back to you know the regular world will, will be and we believe that live classes will be part of you know the regular consumption of you know fitness going forward because like now probably 100 percent of the fitness enthusiasts in the world they experimented some type of you know live classes or on demand or digital experience right so it's 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 likely that you know once we are back to the game that they will try to not not on, only going only going digital, we don't believe that, but we believe that they will try to blend, you know, live or on demand or digital experience with the in person experience. So this will not here just for the short term. I think we believe that live and digital will come from the long run. So that's why we decided to adjust our platform so that once we're back to the game, we'll be able to provide both with the same quality. So it's not like one or the other. So it's not just like a band aid for now. We believe this is going to be here. To stay, so that's why we're trying to talk to our partner and say, "Hey, let's invest and make sure that you have a good solution in terms of live classes because this is not something just for now. This is something that will be here for the long run." So, so and 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 it's 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 getting a lot of good acceptance, I think. So we're pretty optimistic about the ability to our partners to react and 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 to you know to 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 make some money while you know like they're in lockdown. It'll be interesting to see. Certainly, there's this debate is is not new necessarily. With you know, is there a shift to at home and on demand? Is it a digital? Is it in person? Certainly, the the industry has kind of felt this change rumbling for some time now. Uh, of course, we've been forced into a scenario where your only option really is to work out at home. So now it's it's kind of necessary that these studios, platforms like yourself, offer some type of solution. Uh, and again, it'll be interesting to see you know how much how far I guess the pendulum swings given that it won't be one or the other. It'll be like you said, some type of blend of both. Yes, for sure. And and, and I think it's hard to predict, but you know, some level of blend will, will happen. It's hard just to, to, to understand, you know, like where, as you said, you know, where the pendulum will end, I think, you know, but, 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 but what I believe is that all fitness providers or anyone like, you know, that invests in or, or entrepreneur in the sector should be prepared to have you know in-person experience together with online experience or digital experience and how to connect this with social media this will be like a, 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 i think you know more relevant than than ever than, than than ever before so i think this is something that will be and it will separate whoever succeeds versus who might fail you know after that and one thing you mentioned you were saying that you you spun it up as a, as a different company is that accurate no it's it's more like on on our system, so it's just like an, an addition to the platform. Like from the user experience, it's it's, it's the same. Hmm. But from a technology perspective, it's just you know a separate and like separate kind of like a, a structure so that we can provide both versus just you know substituting physical like for the online. We're combining both to make sure that like we have the best experience as possible to the user. 
Right. And then one more thing also given the, the situation, obviously like most companies, um, and I've been talking to executives ac- across the industry as well. Um, you know, we all have kind of different and ambitious growth plans. We want to accelerate into different markets. We want to add new partners. Um, how are you thinking about, uh, the, this going on even beyond the, the couple weeks or months potentially in a lockdown? Um, how are you looking at operations uh, and preparing for what is now a kind of uncertain lockdown into the future? So I, I think the, 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 main, the main focus that we're having is how to, you know, like have a relevant solution for our, our clients and partners. So, so this was like has been critical and where we're focusing all our energy. So that's why, you know, the live classes and, and making sure that we're also, maybe sometimes distributing the apps of our partners to, you know, our, our like the employees of our clients. But there's a lot of things going on in terms of, you know, creating this new marketplace for for digital and live offering. So that's 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 one. The other, of course, you know, you have to be more conscious about, you know, the way you spend money. And 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 I think, you know, the scenario for fundraising and the scenario for availability of cash is going to change after this. So you need to be prepared, right? As a company, as an, uh, so so you have to be conscious, you have to be prepared. There's you know, a lot of things, a lot of a lot of companies, you know, like moving towards that that direction and making important reductions. The way we're looking at this, it's you know, how can we structure and create an organization that will react fast and that will push, you know, this agenda forward. So so that's 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 where you know I think we are we are we are we're positioning ourselves. So that's 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 I think, you know, what what you have to leverage the opportunity, you know, and, and unfortunately everyone has to reduce costs and to be conscious about this. But we are doing in a way that we can have our core team in place to keep pushing for growth. And we are accelerating, you know, like in the markets where we are. So of course when you think about expansion and, and global expansion, you have to review that that plan so that you know you can you can still be relevant in the markets where we are. So that would be we can we probably we're gonna see a scenario in most companies where global expansion will be a second priority. And making sure that you're growing within the markets that we are becoming a top priority. So, so that, that's 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 the way at least we're looking at this. Absolutely, kind of doubling down on that that core business and core operations to make sure everything remains intact. Um, and and one thing related to that, and it's it's kind of tied to you know what we've seen given the the kind of work from home culture that was mandated recently, but. Um, Separate from that, there's this this idea a shift towards maybe more freelance workers of remote workforce where people aren't working maybe in offices or for big corporations like they have traditionally. Have you put thought into that in terms of the gym pass model? Um, how that might affect business in the long run as well? Uh, so, so we uh, that's that's an interesting conversation, and 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 to be totally honest, we were focusing more on the core, meaning you know, like our clients and their employees. I think you know there's there's some like some discussion about the opportunity to target what we call the gig economy in a way where they're not employees of anyone right in a way but they they would require some type of you know uh, 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 support when you think about benefits so we look at this as a as a as a market opportunity but we need to understand you know from uh, uh, like uh, when you think about the three side marketplace who will be the sponsor you know of of a benefit like this for this population so so we're, we're like if we're able to find a sponsor. For this, I think we can uh, 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 engage with that population and, and push, you know, the agenda forward. If we're not able to find a sponsor, then I think the business model is not going to work because then the end of the day is just going to be, you know, a, a, like a, a different way to think about a B two C operation where you know we don't want to go into that scenario. So we need to figure it out, you know, from a from a from a sponsorship perspective, who would be that player? So who will act kind of like as as the employer in a way? For, for those, you know, for that population. Otherwise, we will support our partners so that they can reach out directly to, you know, those those folks and, and bring them in as regular users. That's at least that's how we think about it. Yeah, you mentioned the sponsor there, which is a, an interesting point, made me think of, is there, in your mind, an opportunity for, call it, some of these uh, on-demand or at-home, you know, connected hardware companies to employ a similar model where they're getting that kind of sponsorship, whether it's from a, the insurance company or from the corporations to incentivize users on that end as well. Or I guess, why isn't everyone in the fitness space kind of using this same sponsorship model to to spur usage and, and activity? I, I, we're st- we're, yeah, it, that's, that's interesting. So, I, I still believe that HR, you know, is like our, our corporation when you think about wellness and, and because they invest so so much in terms of their employees, they are the most, you know, incentive and like incentivized folks in, in, in the market. 
to make sure that you know their employees are more active they can benefit from that so you need to understand that who will benefit more from an active uh, uh, lifestyle and and i think you know employers and, and talking like as an employer right in, in 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 my end as well i think you know i'm incentivized to sponsor those types of programs because one i want my employees to be engaged i want my employees to stay you know, here for for the long run. So I want them to retain more people. I want them to be productive. I want them to be happy. And, and I want them to be healthier. So I think, you know, when you think about all that, it's hard to find someone, you know, you know, more incentivized to to support a program like this uh, versus the, you know, the employer. So I still believe that the employer is, is, the, is, the, is the answer here. And those are the ones that should be engaged to make sure that, you know, they can, one, leverage, their, their reach, their communication, and, the, and, and their credibility to make sure that people will be more active. Because I think at the end of the day, it's not only about the money being like they sponsor you on that. I think it's also about, you know, how can you talk and convince people that are inactive, you know, to become active. And, and that's where you really need the credibility of leaders in several organizations. Uh, there are role models for those folks to engage and to connect. And that's where you need HR to really talk about this. And, 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 and at the end, like, you know, you, you really need also the the social aspect of fit, of fit, physical activity and, and the fact that you can have that in a work environment, being remote or not or not remote, it's really interesting because you have this social aspect of people, you know, inviting each other to go to a gym. So we see a lot, you know, in our clients, uh, groups of people that, you know, are into yoga or groups of people that are into triathlon or groups of people that are into running. So, and they try to connect themselves and they leverage gym pass as, as a tool so that, you know, those groups can connect and they can invite more people. And then that's where I think the magic being. So, so I believe it's really hard to substitute the power of, you know, a corporation into the model or, or, or the model that we were able to create. So that, that would be my, my view. Yeah. And I think that's, that's kind of a great place to, to wrap things up with just the, the power of the model and, and continuing to, to tap HR and the employer, uh, to, to elicit that value. Um, just getting out of getting you out of here on this as we wrap up. Um, kind of what's next for Gym Pass? I know you mentioned um, focusing on that that virtual product and streaming live classes. Uh, and how do you continue to innovate for that that end user? So yeah, the, the way we're looking at this is you know making sure that we're creating a a solution that is relevant for 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 HR. So we're first now we're, we want to make sure that you know all our partners, all our fitness partners, they offer live classes in our platform. So it's already like a hard work. So we're being really successful in, in, in pushing that agenda, but it's hard, right? It's kind of like rebuilding uh, the network in a way. So we have more than 50,000 partners globally. So engaging each one of them to explain this new you know, market scenario, this new market opportunity and making sure that we're aligning and they're bringing them in is not easy. So we're, you know, we have our teams focused on that. Also, you know, how can we provide other types of digital offering to you know, HR. So this is something that we're also looking into because, you know, there is no, 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 no limit in a way for what you can, you can offer. And we're trying to partner with, you know, the best apps available or, you know, even the apps or, or that are, that are fitness. But most of our fit, fitness partners, they have amazing apps and, you know, they would leverage, they could leverage Impass to distribute those solutions, that solution as well. So we're trying to understand that opportunity and see how we, we can, we can, we can, we can uh, support HR in this way. And I think most, most than ever, we realize that, you know, the uniqueness of business model, you know, just proved the fact that we have to double down and keep growing and keep focusing on B2B. And that's what we're doing. So we're going to keep engaging with HR. Now, of course, it's hard to engage with the regular solution, but it's now really important to, you know, help them to, to in a way, engage their employees at home. So it's really hard to keep employees engaged when they're working from home. And there's a lot of discussions about risk of depression and how to think about, you know, keeping them focused. So we believe that physical activity or meditation and like yoga, those could be really powerful tools that if we're able to deploy, you know, like consistently with our, our clients, like this could be a really powerful tool for them to keep their employees engaged, motivated. So we're betting, you know, hundred percent on that. So that's, 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 it's, which is kind of like not doing different than what we're doing. So we're just, you know, connecting this digital platform and this is different, but everything else, we're focusing on the same. So we really need to focus on adding value to fitness partners, adding value to HR uh, uh, folks and ter- corporations and adding value to the employees of those corporations. So it, does, it doesn't change because at the end, our mission is not changing. So our mission keeps being defeating activity. And we believe that we, we found, you know, an interesting solution or, or an interesting way, at least to, to really fulfill our mission. 
Absolutely. And I think all the things you're talking about in, in terms of continuing to add value, uh, especially given the, the times that we're living in, it's really just a, a catalyst towards, you know, how do you continue to add more value, get people physically active? Um, and not only that, expand the platform to include, like you mentioned, whether that's meditation or depression, mental health, all those things, the, the opportunity is certainly there. Yeah, for sure. So I think, you know, we, we, we have the opportunity to to keep adding value. And we're seeing, which is interesting, we're seeing a, like a lot of positive response from our HR partners, from our fitness partners. So, so it feels, Joe, that we are in the right path. I think when you hear positive feedback from users, from uh, HRs, from, from, from our, your clients, from you know, your fitness partners, it kind of gives us the assurance that we are in the right path and they were operating you know, in a fair uh, mode and that we can keep providing value to you, you know, all three parts of this three-sided marketplace, as we as we discussed at the beginning. Yeah, and with that, where can folks uh, on either any side of that marketplace get in touch to learn more? So I think the best way, you know, for to reach out to us, like just access our our webpage, so www.gympass.com, and that you know, like if you if you like have need any information, you can also access you know ourselves our contact with like through our social media. So that's, but the website will be the best, the best, the best move. And if people want to reach out to me directly, like feel free to email me at marco at gympass.com. Happy to engage and to talk to anyone that like more information about GymPass. Excellent. Well, Marco, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate you set, shedding some insights on everything that's happening at GymPass and uh, hope you just are staying well and safe during these times. Same to you. It was a pleasure, Joe. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Take care. Thanks everyone for listening to today's episode. For more from Fit Insider, visit insider.fit.co and subscribe to our weekly newsletter for insights and analysis on the business of fitness and wellness. Then go ahead and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. See you next time.